We have some positive stories here. Country Garden opens a restaurant operated completely by robots from Forbes.com. Again, uh, maybe taking something out of the restaurant industry for the long run. I knew that this was coming. I, I was thinking you'd have, uh, you know, a, a food delivery system where the your plate just pops out of a thing on the table. I mean, we have the technology for this. Why do we need servers? Why do we need that human element there? And now, pretty much in every restaurant in America, if you're working as a server, bartender, you're wearing a mask and gloves. It's not very human anyway. Now, I, so I, I this shift economically to more high-tech restaurant delivery of services, good thing being forced a little fast is going to cause major economic upheaval. How many Americans work in the food service industry who are going to be out of a job if, as customers, Americans start demanding this? Country Garden, a property developer in China, revealed that its subsidiary, Kyungshi Robot Catering Group, <clears throat> opened a restaurant complex operated completely by robots. Located in Shundi, which is a city in China's Wangdong province. The restaurant eliminates most human-to-human -human contact and may be a harbinger of how businesses plan to ham handle the aftermath of the coronavirus outbreak. Country Garden Assistant Executive Officer and Jianchi Group General Manager Kui Mi, uh, Kui, Kui, Kui Mi explained that Jianchi Group has built a complete industry chain encompassing back-end supply production, decentralized kitchens, and robotic cooking alongside the operation of restaurants and the management of robots. The restaurant complex is 2,000 square meters or about 21,527 square feet, and it has 20 robots equipped to serve a variety of dishes, including Chinese food, fast food, clay pot rice, and hot pot. The menu has 200 items, but they are available within 20 seconds of ordering. And the restaurant can handle 600 diners at once. Remember I said where we're going with food delivery in this, in this format is, is, you know, food, trees, 3D printing dishes, delivering them by drone. Well, they've got the physical restaurant equivalent of this already. And it takes 20 seconds to get your meal in a perfectly sanitary condition where no human beings who might be carrying a virus get anywhere near your food. Pretty exciting development. I think I think this is, uh, it's, it's, it's a scary <clears throat> for a lot of people who might be losing their jobs. And if you remember Andrew Yang, the presidential candidate for the Democratic Party running on the platform of universal basic income, a big part of his pitch was, robots are going to take our jobs. They took our jobs. <laughs> Good South Park reference, right? Because that's kind of like Andrew Yang is the, they took our jobs for, for uh, liberals who think they're smart. You know, with his hat, M-A-T-H, make America think harder. And it's not think harder because thinking harder would be well, let's think of a way to address this without violence of government, without the centralized control, without coercive socialism and the UBI that he proposes. So it's funny. This is the fear mongering that the left uses. Instead of the, the right going, the Mexicans are coming and they took our jobs. It's the, the robots and they took our jobs. Same thing. Just now it's from a guy named Andrew Yang with the Chinese surname. And with robots that are coming from China. So the temptation here is to say, well, we need more government and we need more universal basic income. And history and logic very easily defeat this argument because you look at the invention of the automobile and we didn't say, oh, horse and buggy manufacturers, we need to subsidize them now and, and make sure that the horse and buggy manufacturing industry doesn't die. No, first of all, a lot more jobs were created. A lot more people were able to adapt. But the fact that transportation became more efficient freed up that, that labor for more specialization. It's sort of like you go back real back, real far back with history to uh, subsistence hunting and gathering societies, right? 
Well, everybody's got a full-time job hunting and gathering to feed their families to stay alive. Oh, and then they invented agriculture. Well, no, we can't have agriculture. That technology is getting rid of all these hunting gathering jobs. And now all these people have nothing. Well, they're, it's freeing them up to develop new technologies and more things and entertain the farmers who are using agriculture and create all sorts of wonderful things that advance humanity. And yes, we are facing a unique crisis uh, with the forced unemployment crisis and the rise of the robots. I mean, even sex robots now, at least according to the Daily Star, uh, the headline is sex robots will fundamentally change human existence after revolutionary upgrades. A new book, Sex Robots and Vegan Meat, has explored the world of sex robots. Its author, Jenny Kleeman, claims they are set to have a big impact on society thanks to human-like features. And we're already with pornography. We have, uh, you know, the, the, the movement of men going their own way, right? MGTOW. M-G-T-O-W. Um, men who say women aren't worth it. Women aren't worth the trouble. Uh, they're not worth the headache. You know, it's, you know, sex with a real woman is better than jerking off, but not enough to justify the cost. And when jerking off becomes having sex with uh, this lovely fake woman right here, you know, well, gee, what do you need women for at all? And, uh, I mean, if you want to make babies, well, no, you hire a surrogate mother. And maybe eventually, uh, you know, we'll have test tube babies that have, you know, less health consequences or downsides than, than organic babies. And, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, have a clone of yourself for a kid, you know, that, that could be where this is going. But there's, there's a more important human element that is kind of missed in all of this. Whether it's robots replacing you in the bedroom or replacing you in a restaurant, it means that we are more freed up to do more human things, to make more art, to create more ways of imagining making our lives better. There is a scary possibility here of this going one of two ways, right? More government, more central control, or less. And overall, I'm still very confident that empowering people to break away from the evil systems that are being created to exploit us, the less those systems are likely to survive. Because we have empowerment from this technology that I hope empowers us more than anything to see past these exploitation rackets. There is, however, this very scary possibility <clears throat> that the socialist fear mongering that is from Republican socialists like Donald Trump and Democrat socialists like Andrew Yang, or of course any of the Democrat socialists actually in office, or who look like they might be President Joe Biden, any of the Democratic members of Congress or the Senate and Democratic governors. <clears throat> Same thing. They took our jobs. The robots. The robots took our jobs. The Mexicans took our jobs. Therefore, we need and the coronavirus. The Chinese took our jobs. Be afraid. Black people are coming to take your jobs with affirmative action and Mexicans are, yeah, okay. They're going to start voting. So there is the possibility this goes the other dystopian way where more people turn to government and we end up with a human herd of subservient wage slaves slowly dying out. <coughs> Obedience equals death. And that's the great fear here is that there may this may empower the eugenicists, the people who want to eliminate major portions of the human population. Now, if we needed population control and there were appropriate incentives, it wouldn't be hard to say buy people into sterility, right? Uh, we talked about the woman in Africa yesterday who had 40-something kids. You know, she has a genetic condition, that 44 kids, that makes her have uh, litters, multiple birth twins and triplets and quadruplets instead of singles. And she has no access to birth control. And they find this, her community finally jumped in and stopped her, right? 
we could do that on a bigger scale. How many people who are just like, yeah, I don't care if I have kids or not, and I'm going to get in a relationship, and I'm going to have to, oh, I have kids, and eh, whatever, no big deal. How many of those people say, hey, if I give you a million dollars, can I sterilize you so I don't have to deal with your kids later? There's a natural economic way for that to happen, right? What's the value of having a kid for the individual? What's the value for society or for other people to not deal with their kids later? Might be a lot, right? And there might be a natural balance here. I don't have a problem with this, but I do have a big problem when it's done coercively, right? When the money being used to pay you has been stolen from you in the first place. So imagine this scenario. The rise of the robots comes to America. And with it, the rise of the socialist state of dependence and that money that is being used to give you your universal basic income is the result of the government preventing you from getting a better job in the age of robots or figuring out a better community-based economic system to separate from that and so essentially you are either being stolen from or profits are being made from you being forced into unemployment or forced to work for a major corporation only. And then that is going to be used to buy, to pay you off to not have kids. So there, there is that peaceful, real, relatively peaceful way, but do you trust the government in that situation to be that compassionate and peaceful? No. In that age, it might come down to forced sterilization. And I don't say this to scare people because I don't believe that this is what's going to happen. It's, it's almost a certainty that it won't happen that way. But the fact that I can describe that as a realistic possibility should motivate you to help us go in the completely opposite direction and start by living differently for yourself. If you embrace a more conscientious lifestyle from the ground up, and embrace what it means to truly be human, to be sovereign in the mind, to live by those values that come with that, to seek self-sufficiency or independence, at least sufficiency with, at the family or community level, apart from these violent evil systems that run most of the world today. You can have a better life, and we can ensure that the future is as far away from that robot-driven, socialist, eugenicist, paradise dystopia as possible.